Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, JDOV, Dan, and I've got a very special guest, Mr. Zach Nelson, CEO of NetSuite. Good morning, good afternoon. What day of the week is it for you, uh, Zach? I don't know. It's you not, don't I'm, know. I'm in London, so it's London Monday in Village. London. London Village, okay, <laughs> fine. So, Zach, we haven't um, heard a lot from NetSuite the last few months. It's been relatively quiet from my perspective. What's been going on? Well, you know, I think this year we've been letting a lot of our financial results do the talking. We've had an incredible year on the financial front. Mm -hmm. um, I think our core strategies of moving up market with the One World product, in yeah. particular in two-tier deployments, has been working just spectacularly, as well as the verticalization of our suite to meet the needs of larger single instance mm. companies. So this has probably been one of the best years in NetSuite's history on so many fronts. You really see you know, the bet we made on those two strategies, the verticalization of the suite mm. and the One World product really starting to take off in 2011. So it's been an awesome year. You had that um, you had that win, didn't you, earlier on in the year, where you'd been working essentially in a kind of a two-tier way that eventually went through to the whole organisation, didn't yes. you? How how did that actually work? Because I mean, that's that was something that, from my perspective, was really unexpected. I didn't expect you to do that. Did you expect? Well, you to I do that? I secretly expected to do it okay. because as the more the more time I've spent in these large organisations, mm -hmm. running SAP and running some of these large enterprise mm -hmm. solutions, I'm shocked at how non-functional they are after. A decade and hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Poured in. They can't even generate an invoice after this, and, right. and they're still throwing more money at it. So I've always felt that I, I, I figured out we had a far better solution, even in the large enterprise space, than we were giving ourselves credit for. So I assumed that in some of these two-tier deployments, we would eventually become one-tier, mm -hmm. and that's basically what's happened. And how it worked was, you know, we went and we automated Asia Pac right. on NetSuite. We went and automated Europe on Asia Pac, and then the people sitting at corporate said, "These guys actually know what's going on in their business." <laughs> Right. You know, why don't we do that at corporate? And so the forcing function at corporate came to be, you know, another made this, you're on an unsupported version, you have to upgrade in the next 18 months. So they said, great, we'll upgrade to NetSuite. And so I think you will see quite a bit of that, actually. What specifically was it about the functionality that NetSuite was offering in those subsidiaries that they've got corporate to pay attention? What specifically was the, the thing that said, you know, put, putting again, uh, aside the maintenance issue that they were yeah. being faced with outside? Well, I think the thing that they learned looking at NetSuite and the subsidiaries is the subsidiaries essentially function in the same way as the corporate right. does. It's the same yeah, business yeah, yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they saw that business problem being automated much more efficiently mm. on NetSuite than it ever was on their enterprise legacy system. So it was a proof point to them that this could work. Sure. And so they say, okay, we just have a few more zeros attached to the revenue stream. It's the exact same business process. Right. So we know it will work for the business process. And that's really in a microcosm, the NetSuite sale. Mm -hmm. You know, They don't ask about the cloud first. They ask, can it solve my business problem? Right. When it does that, you can run a small business, a medium business, or a large enterprise. And that's what they really discovered. Are there any, um, are there any limitations to scale from your perspective at this moment in time, given that? Because you know, NetSuite tends to be positioned as a, a mid-market player. You've You've very specifically done that. You're now saying you can go much further up, up the field. So where, where can you go, do you reckon? Yeah, for, for us, scale has nothing to do with the number of users right. attaching this. We have a far more scalable system than SAP when you look at user count. We have oh, yeah. 2 million people logging in. Yeah, yeah. Their biggest implementation might be 10,000 people, right? It's not even a contest on yeah. numbers of users. And so scale <coughs> is a functional scale issue, as in my example, can it meet the needs of right. this, this type of company? And that was where the verticalization strategy plays in. Right as a second piece of it is focusing on the vertical enables you to add functional scale. Because yeah. you get to larger companies in a particular industry, a small edge case suddenly becomes a very poor, they have to have that feature in the product, not as a customization. Okay. And so that works hand in glove with the, with the upmarket strategy. Of course, the One World product, what's beautiful about that for NetSuite is that that solves a broad horizontal right. ERP problem. And it's almost impossible to find horizontal problems in ERP. They tend to be all vertical. Right. But this multi-company consolidation, every company of every, in every industry who has multinational operations has the multi-company consolidation problem. And we solve that better than Oracle or SAP today. Yeah, usually it takes forever to get that done. Right, and it never works. Yeah, yeah. You know, with NetSuite, you have drill down. Yeah. You know, when you get your consolidation, you don't just see the numbers. You say, what makes up this GL account number? Yeah. Which yeah. items? Which yeah. orders? Yeah. It's phenomenal. So... Have you been able to replicate that in other accounts, or is it a little bit early to... Well, we've had two, two multi-billion dollar accounts that went from two tier to one tier. So wow. uh, Groupon being the second one that just recently, they initially used us for their subsidiary deployments, yeah. and now they're replacing, uh, turns out, Great Plains at headquarters. Oh, I didn't know they had that. I, I assumed that, that it was almost entirely greenfield, no? Uh, no, it, in fact, you know, 
they had 44 accounting systems, right? So, so we, we were, because they had 44 wow. subs yeah, running yeah, on 40, yeah. that, that's what One World solves. And every company that has multinational typically has that. They have an accounting system mm -hmm. per sub. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always replacing that sort of number of systems. But in the case of, of, of uh, Groupon, it was because they'd acquired a lot of yeah. uh, uh, co country-based systems. They had that problem in, on steroids. So, so we replaced the subs, and now we're replacing Great Plains at headquarters. Okay. So when you when you're doing these sort of replacements where there are um, some country specific thingy that they've mm -hmm. got going on there, I mean usually what I find is is that there's a tremendous amount of resistance to to that kind of change. Have you experienced that at all, or not particularly? Uh, you know, you'll you'll experience different types of okay. of resistance in each account. Right. You know, some some IT folks are resistant resistant to the cloud because they see it as eliminating yeah, the jobs. Yeah, yeah. So you see that resistance. Some departmental manager may want their application and not to share data with the rest of the organization. You'll see that resistance. So it really is, it's a very personality driven phenomenon that's hard to say. Every company generally has this sort of resistance. Okay. So having proven that you can go up market, having proven that you can do the one tier as well as the two tier jobs, What's going to be happening in 2012? What can we think about as far as the company is concerned? Well, you know, 2012 is, is going to continue from a structural standpoint. Right. Many of the initiatives we put in place in 2011. So it is continuing to put, as I say, the, the next story on the okay. house, the enterprise story, the two-tier, one-tier, yeah. large, multinational, billion-dollar companies. So we're continuing to invest heavily in that on the product and on the services and sales side. Right. And services, less so our internal services, more so the Accentures and the Deloitte's and those types of service providers who are really excited uh, about the cloud suddenly. They seem to have been betting, you know, when you talk about Deloitte and Accenture, they seem to have been betting on everybody in the last what, year or so. I mean, there's yourselves, there's Salesforce where they've got a big presence, yeah. there's um, work made big presence there and so on and so on and so on. How are you going to um, maintain their attention? How are you going to keep their attention given that the scale of job that you're going to give them is likely to be perhaps a little bit less than you'd see from elsewhere with the large players. Yeah, I think, I think first comment, the companies you mentioned, NetSuite, Salesforce, Workday, they are betting on multiple, but you'll see they're betting on pure play, web native. Okay. That's a very important okay. thing because that's the only winning architecture. Right. Um, in terms of uh, keeping their focus, you know, uh, some of our, our deals might be smaller, but you'd be surprised. They're not that much smaller than what they're doing today. and when they're putting NetSuite in, they're replacing the heart of that business, that mm -hmm. company's business, right? Workday, still yeah, yeah, yeah. ancillary, in a, quotes. Salesforce, still ancillary, Salesforce automation. But when they're replacing NetSuite, they're replacing the heart of the business, and that's mission critical. So they want that business. They want to own the heart of these companies, and NetSuite enables them to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, it's been an amazing year with Accenture. So you talked um, at the last earnings call, if I remember rightly, about a certain percentage of the business coming from those kinds of channels. I mean, it's something that you repeat from time to time. Is, is that going to continue to grow then as, as these relationships develop as, from your perspective so that you can concentrate on being a, a software house as opposed to having to do all this early stuff? Yeah, we always hoped that that would be the case. Right. You know, we, we've viewed services as a necessary evil in the sense of yeah. when we first started started this, the whole world didn't believe in cloud computing yeah, as yeah, they yeah, apparently yeah. do today. So we had to make sure our customers were success, successful and so yeah. we had to build uh, a services arm and in fact, I think we're probably the largest mid-market services company on the planet right. today because of that. We have a couple hundred uh, services people. So, um, so that was a necessary evil. We've always wanted to work with partners. We've always had a great yeah. partner program. Yeah. You know, the channel is growing significantly. I think it was 35% of, well, our CFO said 35% of new business bookings last quarter. So that's a big yeah. leap forward. So yeah, I think the channel in general is going to be important. I think the Accenture channel is a unique one in the sense of it's really about moving up market. And uh, as we do that, we're, you know, some of the things we're looking at is, do our salespeople carry a quota for services? Our right. thinking is not. Let's, to ensure we bring in Accenture, to ensure we bring in Deloitte. So we're going to do some things differently as we, uh, as we look at the different segments of the market. Okay. Thinking about the differences between the U.S., your home, and, and Europe, we're in Europe, okay. Mm -hmm. How do you see um, the channel differences? I know you've had a, a, a reasonable amount of success with the likes of McLadry's and so forth. Yeah. How do you see it in Europe? Because uh, I, I have a very specific view, but I'd like to hear yours. You know, I, th I think it's evolving for us here. Right. You know, we're a fairly UK-centric mm. country today, company. Um, I thought you wanted to be big in Germany. 
Well, we do want to be he big. Wants in, to be big in Germany. We, well, we and we we are big in Germany. <laughs> believe me, we we're we're we're, uh, we're bigger than David Hasselhoff in Germany. <laughs> but um, but you know, so I I think as we look outside of the UK, we definitely want to have a really strong partner model in France, okay. in Germany, in Italy, because at the end of the day, you can't just go that we have product. The product's sure. done, localized, sure. certified, Germanized, Francoized, whatever. Um, it's really about building the organization to support it. You need okay. German-speaking sales, German-speaking support, German-speaking PS, German, and we'd much rather leverage a partner to do that than to it's, build it's all that stuff ourselves. Yeah, it? yeah, and yeah. So if we can leverage partners there, that's that's the idea. Okay, right. I wasn't going to ask the question, but I'll ask the question. You know the question, right? Um, over the weekend, we saw SAP acquire success oh, factors. Yeah. And you're, the good lady to my right, who's off camera, <laughs> said, you've got to ask Zach about this question. Come on, you have, everybody's got an opinion on this one, what's yours? I don't, you know, I, I look at it from a global perspective, I think what's going on is obviously this is driven by, not by strategy on SAP mm. side, but by customers saying, we're not going to buy any of your old yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big change. And that's what I felt that the change globally this year was the customer demand curve has changed to right. kicking the tires on SaaS to demanding it. And right. SAP's response is basically that. Now, that said, you hate, as a, as a CEO, you hate to be put on the defensive to do something reactive. And I think this is a fairly reactive acquisition that doesn't really solve their core problem mm -hmm. at the end of the day. At the end of the day, people, Success Factor is a great product, but nobody runs their business on Success Factors. Right. People run their business on SAP today. They run their business on NetSuite. They have not solved the problem for their customers of providing a cloud-based solution that they can run their business on. Mm. And so I think that's their core problem. They spend a ton of cash to, to knee-jerk, get into the cloud business, but it, it actually made it more complex, made it harder mm. to solve their core problem, which is they have not migrated their core business to the cloud in the way that NetSuite has migrated, you know, a, a rich ERP yeah. system. It's a, very, it's a very, very big problem, I think, they've yeah. got on their plate. Zach, what else do you want to tell us? What else is, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me I, up I've at night? I've missed transatlantic flights yeah. that we all have today. Well, you know, it is just taking advantage of this enormous opportunity that right. NetSuite has. And we're, we are taking advantage of it today, but, you know, we are, you, if you're a CEO, you want to be in my seat. You've right. got an unbelievable product that solves really hard uh, company, uh, customer problems. Uh, you've got the world moving to this model of deployment. And so what I worry about is making sure we can take advantage of it as, as we should. And I think we are. We're hiring like crazy. You know, we're going to add another couple hundred people next year um, around the world. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a we have. You know, we've always sort of talked about being the next SAP, and I, I I say that because very reticently because most people think of SAP and they don't really think of good things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, SAP in the sense of being the system of record for next generation companies, and I think that's our opportunity in, 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 that, in the mid market. In the mid market, but also, but you know, these big companies. I, right. I've discovered over the last year. The large company opportunity is available to us as well. Good luck with that, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There you go, guys. Heard it first. <laughs>